Welcome to my GIS portfolio video series. My name is Robert Sacco and since all of my GIS database administration and web development occur, occurs behind a firewall, I thought I would create this video series to display some examples of my work. In this video I'm going to demonstrate a Visual Basic .NET web application that I developed that I call the Species Data Inventory. And the reason for this application was I was participating in a data committee for the agency and it was brought to the attention of management that while the GIS unit uh, managed and maintained species data at a statewide level for major data holdings, there were a lot of efforts of biologists collecting data either with GPS's and XY but some form of uh, GIS type data um, but that was being collected at a local level and managed and maintained by those individual biologists and it was thought it, the I thought I would develop this application to, to allow those biologists to enter their projects and then that would allow the staff at large to do a query and see what GIS projects were or what data is being collected for species across the state whether it's being collected at a statewide level or even just at a local um, project level. And so it, I called it the species data inventory and you know there's just a main launching page and it's a pretty simple application there's just a few uh, links to the pages that make up this application. The first thing is we want to query by species. And this brings us to a page where there's a simple box and the user can enter um, a key keyword. So say we're looking for deer. So once we type in deer, then we get a, a list of the the actual species, the, the names that are found in the, the species table for the database and once you can locate, I mean we even get a, a deer mouse and a, and a bird that kill deer along with mule deer and white-tailed deer. But say someone wants to see well what what studies or what data is available for mule deer. So we can click on mule deer and what we return is um, first a, uh, a list, a, bullet, a bulleted list of the listings, conservation listings or other important um, listings that that species found on. So this is um, a big game animal for us at the uh, division of formerly the Division of Wildlife now Colorado Parks and Wildlife as well as being uh, a species of concern for Colorado House Bill 1298 which uh, deals with um, oil and gas exploration and wildlife considerations um, as well as being a species on this Western Governors Association um, decision support system, which was again a uh, is a region-wide um, effort to um, determine uh, a, a critical habitat for various species. But then, most imp more importantly, and what the data is designed to do is provide a listing of all the all the GIS layers that. Um, were collected for mule deer. And so once you see that list, someone may come in and say, well, oh, I'm interested in, in this. What, what is this evaluation of winter range uh, and survival? And so they can click on that, and then they get a very simple report, which is has the project name, a brief description, and some contact information on who the primary investigator was and and how the data is collected you know whether it's points lines poly, polygons or you know x y's in a spreadsheet and so then this would allow somebody doing a search like this to be able to um, if they were interested in seeing the data or learning more about it they'd have uh, access to the the primary lead on that to either ask more about the data or, or get a copy of the data. So that in a nutshell is 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 pretty much the the primary reason behind this application and and hopefully the benefits that it provides is allowing folks to search various species and and get a listing of the the GIS data and, and basically where to find it. 
Now, what we also did is, um, in addition to not really knowing what GIS data was collected at a local scale, um, we also had issues with listings, like people trying to figure out, well, what species is, is listed or what, what list of species occurs on a certain list and and those lists were scattered um, on various websites and not and not collected in one place cohesively so I compiled the database looked at all those various sources and and made the relationships to the the species to to generate um, the listings and so now in this page when you come in you can actually select a listing and there's you know various conservation listings and other um, lists that are of importance uh, you know to our agency and so but say you wanted to get a list of the federally threatened species so then that returns a list of those species and as you can see they are a live link and so if you want to learn more about that species so say we want to see more about links well we return to that page that I had previously displayed and we get um, not only is it federally threatened but it's state endangered and then it also occurs on um, several other conservation lists and again we can see um, the GIS data that is available for this and then if we want to see uh, the details for that um, GIS data layer we, we can come in and grab this report. So that's the listings in a, in a nutshell. Um, we also have a query by keyword and so the species uh, search you know focuses on the actual species names that we have in the table and what what the researcher uh, the GIS analyst has entered for that project but there's also a space where you can at, enter keywords and so um, if you were looking for studies that say maybe weren't maybe just for bald eagle maybe you wanted to look for all raptors if the if raptors occurs in the anywhere within uh, any of the fields that the person entering the project had put in then we'll also return that so again so bald eagles you know someone had also entered you know probably raptor as a as a keyword and so then those show up as well as burrowing owl and and then just generic raptor um, surveys so that's just a way to be able to uh, to search keywords and we, we did this I think primarily someone was doing water quality work with uh, invertebrates in, in the, this Colorado River watch so we, instead of in adding all the invertebrate species individually we just uh, created this and so you could also search for uh, invertebrate or benthic flies and organisms and, and you'd also return be able to see that you know this study is out there with GIS data so that's a, a quick demonstration. Oh, I guess uh, finally, I, you know, it also has the pages have uh, a, a, an entry mechanism for people to enter their their projects. And as you can see, um, you can kind of hover over and get a a um, kind of a pop up on describing what kind of information that field is looking for. And as you can see, it's. A, a quick form hopefully it's not too much of a burden for staff to fill out um, with all their other duties but it asks for a quick project name description the keywords that al allow for that keyword search and and then what kind of if it's for one species multiple species habitat um, what the studies focused on contact information um, we're, you know we also have the ability to uh, enter data from other agencies and other resources uh, just so that that data can be viewed is also available f for that species when somebody does a, a search um, primary investigator so this the primary investigator different from the contact in that the primary investigator may it may have been a study or data that it was collected 
a while ago, maybe by somebody who's since retired, but then that data now resides with somebody else. And so the contact would be who that data resides with, but the investigator was who collected that data originally. And so many people may know um, about data, like someone who had collected the data and they may be looking for that data and, and don't know who has, has it. So they could also search and for that investigator's name, it would come back and, and provide the contact for um, who has who has that. Then we quickly collect, um, you know, begin and end dates for the, the data collection, you know, what, where the study areas, if it's local or statewide or region-wide. And, and then other various aspects on the GIS, whether it's tabular with no X, Y, it's just some kind of data that's been collected for a species, or various um, GIS, you know, if it's in a GIS or, or paper or digital with X, Y, like a spreadsheet with X, Y or not X, Y, that, those, that type of information. If it's GIS, you know, whether it's points, lines, polygons, rasters, then we have um, collection information, and this allows the user. You can also, um, you know, select more than one if they need to. And we also have, you know, from the the database, pro um, providing a way to enter a consistent um, species name, so that and, and they can also limit um, the species list. So it defaults to the, kind of the most popular the the species that have the most data associated with them is is what the default is and then the user can also come in and and, um, and retrieve uh, different categories so if they just want to see amphibians they can get a list of the amphibians if they just want to see birds they can get a list of the birds and then once they get the prop the appropriate list that they're looking for, they can come in and, and start adding species. And then they can choose whether they want to submit a record and add a, another record, in which case um, the data fields maintain uh, the, most of the data that they had entered, the contact information and, and those types of things that might be repeated for another project of theirs, or they can submit the record and, and just exit the application. So essentially that's my Visual Basic um, .NET application that I've, deli I've um, developed for capturing species data within the agency and um, providing a mechanism for staff to enter their data, their, their GIS projects, as well as search for it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, come back for more. Thanks.